I was recently contacted by a nice chap who supports this channel on Patreon. He wanted to know if I was interested in receiving some unusual tape cartridges. Well, I think you can guess the answer to that question because I've got them here. There's four of them and the story behind these is quite interesting. This chap works as a train driver. Now, of course, train drivers take their brakes every now and then and his break room is in a station. During this recent pandemic, they'd had to organise some kind of one way system for social distancing. So you went out from a different door to the one you came into. And to enable this to happen, they'd opened up a part of the station that had been abandoned for a long time, just for these people to walk through on their way out. Well, as this chap was walking through, he noticed there was a room labelled as communications. So he had a look inside, and in this room there was an abandoned rack of equipment, answer phone equipment. This would have been used for uh, playing back announcements to people who rung up over the phone to get train times, I presume. Uh, this had been long since decommissioned and more modern systems had replaced it. This was one of, I believe, 65 locations in the UK that would have a similar setup for people to ring up and get their messages from. So he saw this rack of equipment and he saw that there were some tape cartridges still left in it. So he liberated them and uh, sent them on to me. Now, again, I've got to reiterate, this thing should have been scrapped a long time ago. The only reason it wasn't scrapped is because it was more hassle than just leaving it there. It was at the top of a narrow flight of stairs. There was no real easy way of getting the whole thing out of there. And it would have cost a lot of money. So much easier just to close the door and pretend it doesn't exist anymore. So that means it's been sitting there for perhaps 30 years or so with these cartridges in. He's pulled them out, sent them on to me, and I think it'd be interesting to have a listen to these to see what the last message was that was recorded onto these. Now, I've got one here that's labelled 1989, so you kind of get the idea of the vintage of these. Now, of course, it's just going to be train time. It's not going to be the most exciting message, but still, I think it's uh, interesting to hear what's on these cartridges. Oh, it's killing me to find out. Anyway, put it that way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to figure out a way to play these back, but of course, without that giant rack of equipment that's still stuck in that abandoned part of the station. So let's get on with it. So as we look at these cartridges, we can see they come from the answer phone company. It's an endless loop tape cartridge system, much the same as that of the eight track or the play tape, the high pack, even the pocket rockers. This one doesn't have a label on it, so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on inside. So the tape gets pulled off the center of the spool, travels along the front and then gets put back on the outside of the spool. It just carries on like that. Now, as it travels along the front, of course, as a playhead, that would go into this recess here. You can see it's that one because there's a pad on the inside. And that's pretty much it. Very simple system. There's just one slight issue, though. In an endless loop tape cartridge, where's the beginning? Now, <laughs> it sounds a bit odd, but if you want to listen to an announcement, you want to hear the whole thing. You don't just want to hear part of it. So this needs to know where the beginning of the announcement is. Now, there's a couple of ways you can have an endless loop tape that knows where the end of the tape is. One way is like on an eight track. On an eight track, there's a little bit of foil. Once it's gone through a whole loop, this piece of foil activates a sensor in the machine, which drops the heads down to the next program. So that's the way an eight track would do it. But that's really just telling us where the end of the tape is. It's not telling us where the start of the recording is. Now, if you were to make a recording on one of these and you were just to do it at a, a random position, you want it still to start at that point. Now, I don't think these have used the foil system because looking at them, none of them have got the foil, if I could get it the right way up, none of them have got the foil showing. Now, just think the last thing these did was play an announcement and then cue themselves up for the next announcement that never happened. So there should be a little bit of foil showing here or even perhaps just down the side, but there isn't. So I don't think they use that system. I think these use a system that's a little bit more accurate and the same system that would be used on something like an NAB cart. So the way one of these NAB carts works, in the case of these ones here, these are stereo. So it's three track. There's the left and right stereo, the tracks that we hear, but there's a third track. That's the one with tones on it that the machine's listening out for. Now there's going to be a tone just before 
each recording that's on here. Now, in the case of these cartridges, these have come from a radio station, so these are jingles. So there's quite a few short jingles on this one. It's a 70 second cartridge. I think there's four jingles on here. So there's a short jingle, bit of a gap on tape, and then another jingle. But it always cues itself up, just ready to play the next jingle. So you better hear, as soon as I put this in and press play, it's in exactly the right position. The best variety of rock and roll, The Loop, FM 98, WLUP, Chicago. Now at this point, the DJ would uh, cut to the news of the traffic, the weather, whatever, put a record on, but uh, he'd move away from playing whatever was on this whilst it moves itself onto the next jingle. So it's queued up now, ready to go. So if I wanted, I could cut to it again later, and we've got a slightly different jingle now. Playing all your favorite rock and roll from yesterday and today. The Loop, FM 98, WLUP, Chicago. So you get the idea. It knows where it is on the tape and brings itself up to the next announcement to play back. So I'd imagine that's going to be a very similar system to these answer phone cartridges. These will be mono, of course. There's no need for stereo on an answer phone. So these will have, I presume, two tracks on them. We're going to have one track, which is the one that gets played out over the telephone. But the other track, I'm assuming, will have tones on it similar to this so that once someone's listened to their announcement over the phone and hung up the machine will then move on to the next tone queuing itself up ready for the next person to ring up at least i think that's how they're going to work so just taking a quick look at the machine that these have come out of you can see at the bottom there are your two cartridge slots at the top left there's a counter for each of those to show how many times each tape has been played in the center we've got a speaker Next to that is a volume control, no doubt, for the speaker. And then below there, we've got a DIN plug socket. So you'd plug your microphone into that. The LED would no doubt come on when you turn the dial around to the record position. You'd record your announcement. You'd move it up to the confirm position to listen back to it. If you were happy, you'd move it around to the normal position, and that would be the new outgoing message. If for whatever reason you wanted to stop the outgoing message being played, you'd turn the switch to that inhibit position. At least, that's how it looks like it would work. OK, so the next question is, how do I go about playing one of these back? Obviously, I've got nothing that the cartridge would fit into. So that means I'm going to have to take the tape out and play it back on something else. Fortunately, the tape in these is standard quarter inch tape, the same as is used in many reel to reel machines. Now, I've got quite a few different reel to reels around the house. The one I've chosen to play it back on, or at least attempt to, is this. This is the Sony TC 550 2. It's the Japanese variant of the TC 510 2. You may have seen this featured in a video I did a while ago where I tried to recreate the intro section to the TV show Mindhunter. They'd use one of these for that. Now, the reason I've chosen this particular model, well, a few things. It's a two track machine. So if this is, as we suspect, a two track tape, one with the audio on, another with the pilot tones, it should line up with this, fingers crossed. The slowest speed on here is 3.75 inches per second. The reason I mentioned that is looking at this cartridge here, it says it's a 180 second cartridge. So three minutes doesn't look to be an all that much tape in there for that length of time. So I've got to think that it's gonna be running at quite a slow speed. One thing I want to say, though, this particular cartridge, this is the other one that's kind of different to the others. It's got this bit of orange on the edge here. And I think this is probably the main cartridge, the intro cartridge, the one that you would hear when you ring up. The first thing that you would hear would be on here. The reason I think that is, well, this is very worn. So it looks like this has been played over and over and over again for a, a long time. So this is the one that probably got stuck in the machine and just stayed there and then they kept swapping out these ones whenever they updated the timetable because these look a, a lot fresher on there. They don't look as worn at all. So that's my theory. We'll find out, of course, won't we? Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, I'll re-spool this one, the one that I think is the intro one, onto a reel, and then we'll try and play it back. OK, so I've got everything I need. I've got my splicing block, a razor blade, some tape, leader tape, and the cartridge. Now, the reason we're using some leader is because we're not sure if the recording starts immediately at this point. It's going to start very quickly. So if I was to wrap some of this around a take-up spool, we're going to miss the start of the recording. So I'm attaching a leader to it for that purpose. And rather than opening up this cartridge, which seems unnecessary, best thing to do just to pull a bit of tape out, attach it onto the leader, and then thread it onto the machine that way. Mm. 
Okay, so now we've reached the end, I'm going to put some more red tape on here, then I can wind it back onto that reel, and then we'll be able to have a listen. Okay, here goes, moment of truth. Well, the good news is there's something on the tape. The bad news is it's at the wrong speed. It's quite difficult to understand. So it needs a bit of manipulation. So I might as well splice all the tapes together onto the one reel and then copy those across into my PCM recorder. Okay, so I captured the audio, put it into the computer, slowed it by half. Turns out that was the right speed. It was recorded at one and seven eighths inches per second. I've also increased the volume because it really was very low. And in addition to that, they mentioned a couple of phone numbers in the announcement. I've snipped off the ends of those. One thing for length, another thing because if you mention a phone number, loads of people will try and ring it for some reason. It's probably been reused and some old granny's going to get hundreds of phone calls. So I've taken those numbers out now. And also, final word, spoiler alert, all the tapes have the same announcement on. And that kind of gives away what is just about to be played. So here we go. This is a British Rail recorded information service. From 2000 on Sunday the 8th of March 1993, all recorded information on this number will cease. The Telephone Inquiry Bureau at Rugby will also close. For intercity information, please call 0203 and for Network South East information, please call 0908 or your nearest alternative telephone inquiry bureau. May I, on behalf of all the staff at Rugby, thank you for your support and hope that you will continue to travel by British Rail. Okay, so not the most exciting thing in the world, but it does make perfect sense. The last announcement played on the machine would be the one to say that service has been discontinued. Now, I've got a theory about that first tape as well. If that's the way the system was working for a while, then the reason the first tape might be worn more than the others, perhaps when you ring in, the first tape is the one that plays, first of all. However, if that one is playing, when someone else rings in, they get tape number two and so on down to tape number four. So you've got four lines can listen to tapes at the same time. Well, on a discontinued service, it's most likely that you're not going to even hit those other ones. People are just going to hear that first announcement, this service has been discontinued and hang up. But that one could get played an awful lot before they finally flip the switch and turn the machine off. I had a couple of other theories earlier on about how they operated. Uh, I said it was probably a two track system. And in a way I was right, in a way I was wrong. The tape is split into two but only one of the tracks is being used. And the way it identifies the start of the announcement is as suspected using a tone system, but the tone is on the same track as the announcement. So you get the announcement, you get a long tone for the rest of the tape, and then you get the announcement again, coming back around again. So the way the system works is it listens for that tone to stop, puts itself into pause, person rings up, it plays the announcement. And then when it gets to the uh, bit where the tone starts again, that's the end of the system and it will no doubt hang up if the person hasn't already hung up at the other end. So there you go, we found out what was on the tapes. Now you might be thinking the juice ain't worth the squeeze, as in the results aren't worth the amount of effort required to get to them. But for me, I like the squeeze. I don't know if that's the right thing to say nowadays. I like the effort required to get to the result and we always knew it was going to be something about train times. It was never going to be all that exciting. But, you know, there's nothing I'd rather do than have a bit of a play around with a few tape decks just to figure out what sort of tape, solve a puzzle, if you will. Hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, uh, usual stuff, subscribe, bell, etc. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.